All right. Uh, the Pure Math video part two. Part two. Um, okay, so if you've watched the first part of this, you've seen a little bit of what I've done in the coding for this game that I've got here. Now, the game's going to change as we go through the code, but um, I want to show the progress of how I actually designed the game. But the first thing you'll notice is that I create the, the, the playing field for this, which I've shown you how I did that. I have a div element right here, which, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the um, inspector. And I'm going to show you that there is a div element that's right here. And if I click on that div element, you can see that it's it's got an ID of pyramid. Um, I could have just called it board or whatever, but um, so that, that everything is actually placed on. So um, by the way, if you're wondering how I just did all that, uh, I do Control Shift I in Chrome, which brings up the debugger um, and actually the programming tools. And I just simply click the inspector up here and I hover over the field that I want to know what it is, and there it is. Um, I can see it, I can see it to the right here. Anyway, that's, and I can see each of the individual elements, because I know that there's questions on how that actually worked. Well, so how did I get these cards up here, and how do they snap in? Well, I'm going to go ahead and um, go back to the URL where you can see the code. And this is where I created these elements, and I did it by actually just adding to the inner HTML of that div that was the pyramid. And I gave them IDs and I gave them locations and I gave them style. And there's all those boxes up there on the screen. But how did I put the cards there? Well, first, I have images of each of these cards stored. Um, of course, I'm in JS Fiddle and I don't have a place to put them there, but I have them stored on another website of mine. And they're numbered 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and they're all PNG files, the numbers of those. Uh, so they're, all the cards are actually done by number. And the cards were created by a graphic artist. They're actually the artwork that we use for the um, actual physical Pyramath game, which is real cards. So what I wanted to do to start the board off is drop five cards randomly five random cards, and this will remain random. I'm going to change some of the stuff later on, but this will remain random. But five random cards show up at the top. So uh, it's easy. I'm going to do a loop for I1 to 5. I'm going to pick up a random number between 0 and 9. I'm going to uh, find the element. Now remember, these divs that I'm dropping the cards onto were numbered 11, 12, though they are named 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 for that first row. So just one um, plus the string, which would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Boom. There you got them. There, so I've, I can get the element I want to drop the card onto, which is just a div. So I just change the inner HTML of that div to be the image, which the divs are designed to be the right size. I did do a little bit of offset. You can kind of see it right here because I liked the idea of it being you could see that it was inside of a box. And I could have made the box a little bit bigger, but it did well when it matched the size of the card. So all that was relatively easy and, and, and you know, nice to do. So um, then I did one last thing as I took the, uh, I used the set attribute to set the data attribute equal to the number of the card itself. So I have, I know on the end, I know that that element has that card on it, which is going to be important because if you're going to play on the card, you're going to play on a div where the other two pieces are the parents. Let's go back to the show so you can kind of see that. And I'm going to show you, show you what I mean. This might be easier to do if I um, go ahead and bring up the inspector to look at them. But let's say this is the, the ID of this div is 21. Well, the ID of the two divs that were here were 11 and 12. So the parents of 21 are 11 and 12. So you've got to be able to, uh, so when you know that, when you put a card here, you can look at these two cards and see if it's a legal play. So that's going to become important later on. And this is simply just an image in the inner HTML of this div that I have there. And I and I set the data to be equal to the number of the cards so that I can actually play. I can look and see what was being played on. 
So if you're doing a card game, this all becomes really important because you know how your how the things play is important. And the code for it is right here. It's just a simple loop, one to five, setting the attribute, putting an image there. Now we want to. Now I'm going to remove this later on because I'm going to change the way the game plays. But what I wanted to do is have you actually put out a card and that card is then going to be a playable card. This is also going to get to how the bug in, in the code works, but we're going to fix that late, later on. So right now I'm going to be using the jQuery and all I did was I set the click action of new card, which is by the way, the name of the uh, button, the name of the button. And I set a few things to occur. One is I started a timer. So that when you start the game um, and you click that new card, a timer starts going on. And that's going to become later important later on when I change the gameplay. But right now it does time how long it takes you to fill out the pyramid. So the timer just runs in the background. I get another random number between 0 and 9. And I call the function add card. And if I go down here to add card, what I do is I create an image. I set the ID of the image, I set the source of the image, and then I take that document, so the card, the, uh, the card document, so I'm going to actually get that document, and I pen the image on it. And the ID, I, well, then I do one other thing, is I set the, uh, this element to draggable, okay? So the card is a spot down here where I've actually got, uh, I'm going to be putting a, a widget here, but I'm going to be putting an object down there and it's actually below this deal new card that you can see it. Well, I don't think you can see it because my picture is probably in front of it. Let me go to show. And it'll again, I, again, I can show you these elements. Let's do control shift I so you can see what is where and I'm going to scroll here and I'm going to use the inspector. Here's my button. Okay. And I've got, and we can't get to it. That's okay. But down here, I've got a spot where I'm going to put a card below the deal new card button that we have there. That button, by the way, is going to, is going to be removed in the final version, but I put code in to help me test as I'm going along. Another thing that you should do. So, you know, code that you put in for while you're building is just scaffolding. You can remove it later when you get to the final gameplay. So do that. So any, basically, you're going to click the new card and it's going to create a card and it's going to put it down below and it's going to become, it's going to be draggable. So the add card allows me to put this draggable item in here using the get element by card, which is a div up there. <clears throat> and I append the child. And I set the containment equal to the game itself, so it can't go outside of the game, which essentially is the entire HTML screen. Now, you need to have this ability to drop the card too. It's draggable, but it also needs to be droppable. So my drop, okay, here we go. Then my handling of the drop event is down here in the function handle drop event. And I'm going to get the, the draggable. So basically what's being dragged and the droppable is going to be the element, the, the, this element, which is base, which is what the function has. So I have, and so now I'm going to get a few things. I'm going to get the value of the card and this just drop, this just goes into the, um, the naming. I'm going to get the dra ID attribute of the draggable. And I've set up the naming convention so that if I slice that and get the second element, I've got the card value. That would be the zero through nine that's on the card. And I also get the drop ID of where you're dropping the card. If it's dropping onto a droppable element, and that droppable element is one of the, the divs that I've set up with the IDs, I'm going to get that drop ID. So I now know what card I've got. I also now know where I'm dropping the card. Those are two. And you should definitely look at the draggable, droppable documentation for jQuery UI. It's really not that hard. I've got, I think, 10 videos I've done on drag drop. And you can kind of look at, I'm not going to go over everything that deals with drag drop. So I am now 
I'm going to grab the div. I'm going to look at a few things. Um, I'm dropping it onto a div. First thing I got to do is, hey, um, is there already a card there? Because you can't drop it if there's already a card that you're dropping it on top of. You need to drop it onto a blank one. Then I check to see if it's an actual legal play. If it's a legal play, I'm going to go ahead and drop the card onto the div, and we'll look at drop card, and it looks like it's going to be in a different video. But think of the logic. I pick up a card and drag it. I'm either going to drag it to a blank space, and in my, this case, it's just going to sit there. I'm going to drop it on top of another card, which I can't do. Or I'm going to drop it into a location, and I need to check if that location is a legal play. And if it's not a legal play, you don't want to be dropping the card. The final thing that I do is after you drop the card, after the card drops and snaps to and everything is set saying that that is a play, it's been done, you're going to check to see if it's the actual final location that you finish the pyramid. And then you're just going to get a message that says, hey, congratulations, you solved it. So that is all the logic. So think about that logic. I get the card that I'm picking up right here. I get where I'm going to drop it. I check the places that I can possibly drop it, looking at all the places that I could. And I then check to see if it actually goes into a spot. That is a good spot. Then um, you're going to check to see if it's the final spot. You're going to drop the card onto there and you're going to see if it's, make sure it's the final spot. Let's, let's quickly look at drop card because that is where I actually do something. In drop card, I get the div that I'm dropping it onto, and drop card needs two things. It needs to know what card number you're dropping there and the ID of where you're getting dropped. And if it is, I do the exact same thing that I did when I was putting those initial cards up there. I picked up the div where I'm dropping it onto. I set the inner HTML of the div to be equal to the card itself, the image of the card. I set the attribute of the div to be the card number. So that's the data attribute. And that way I know I can always pull it back and I then remove the card from the screen because I've actually put the inner HTML of that to be inside the div. So the card itself that is being dropped is removed from the screen after it's dropped into a legal location. Otherwise it just sticks, sits there. So we're going to look a little bit later on where I can go from this, uh, be video number three, but I want to go back very quick and just kind of demonstrate what's happening here. Back here again, I hit deal new card. A card shows up, it's a seven, six plus one is seven. I can drop it right there and notice the whole thing snaps in. Okay, that was because the image, um, that image became the inner HTML of that drop target that I just dropped it onto. So, and then the card itself that I was actually carrying is removed, it's destroyed. So it disappears. There. Uh, and then I can keep, continue on. Now, th again, this is going to change. This deal card is going to go away soon, but uh, you'll see because that's the final gameplay. Hopefully you enjoyed this so far and you're following the code. Uh, I am going to take this. I'm going to take the code. Uh, I will post the code to the, um, I'm going to take the JavaScript code and I will post it to the um, videos as I go through. And also, this is also, and you can't see this. Now you can. That's the JS Fiddle right there. That is my working copy of this version. This is version two, version of the game. I'm going to have other versions because I'm changing the gameplay, and the game can have different ways of playing it. So those will, you'll see those as you go along. Anyway, good programming. I'm hoping that you're kind of getting an idea of how my thought process is working, but more importantly, how you can make these things actually work.